our day. The way of the crypt warriors can rely on the bank is no way. So much to talk about today. Uh, October 16th, uh, tax extension day is due today. It's just so bizarre that we have to pay money to these people who literally steal the money that we give them. <laughs> they don't put it to our best use. Absolutely not. They want to pay for a new war. I'm not going to talk about war today, but I am going to talk about silver. I'm going to talk about um, the, the spike in cryptos, a little life, a glitch in the matrix of controlling cryptos, uh, and J.P. Morgan. Um, Wall Street on Parade does a great job explaining exposing the, the criminals of J.P. Morgan. I hope everybody understands that J.P. Morgan is probably the entity that is going to be destroyed first, taking down everybody else. Remember, good guys are looking to blame the bankers and the politicians, not you, the little guy. In 2008, they blamed you, the little guy, for buying too many houses at over overvalued prices. Um, not this time. This time, the, the blame appropriately should be put squarely on the bankers, and there is no more evil banking rigging operation than J.P. Morgan Chase. As a matter of fact, J.P. Morgan has been bleeding deposits. Um, other than their acquisition of the companies they destroy, <laughs> like uh, First Republic, um, Great job. It's been seven quarters. J.P. Morgan Chase has lost a quarter of a trillion dollars in deposits in the last seven quarters. Fortress balance sheet or leaky sieve. They've gone from $2.56 trillion to $2.313 trillion. Now, here's something to think about that nobody thinks about except, oh my God, at the beginning of the year, everybody who had money at Silicon Valley Bank said, oh, what am I doing here? J of J.P. Morgan's $2.3 trillion about half of them are uninsured depositors. Uninsured, meaning anything over $250,000 is not an insured deposit. Even for corporations, for Apple, I don't know how many <clears throat> structures they have, but I can't imagine if, if a company as large as Apple or Warren Buffett has money in J.P. Morgan. I mean, Warren Buffett has massive amounts of cash, probably doing like Treasury Direct type of thing. But some, quite a few people have more than $250,000 at J.P. Morgan, about half of it, a little over half, I think. Actually, they say in here, maybe a little under. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And because they are losing deposits so fast, the FDIC is going to have to come in and do something, most likely. But they have, uh, let's see, it's down here somewhere. Do, do, do. Here it is. According to the bank's regulatory filings as of December 31st, 2022, J.P. Morgan Chase held $2.051 trillion in deposits in domestic offices, of which $1.05 trillion were uninsured. The bank also held another, held another $4.18 billion in deposits in foreign offices, which are also not insured. So that's one point five four. Wait. Yeah, $1.5 trillion dollars is uninsured depositors meaning poof gone um when jp morgan goes down it's not gonna be an if with jp morgan they have 60 trillion in derivatives they are the most criminal bank on the planet who knows what they have in gold silver <coughs> copper palladium platinum um nobody really knows uh it, and it's such a small dollar amount compared it's the most important thing of the entire financial system is controlling silver, by the way. If you didn't know that, you should already know that. Um, that is the number one most important thing that the criminal bankers have to do is control the price of silver. They would love it. You know, they can set the price of gold to a million dollars an ounce. They love that. They have a lot of that gold, most of it. Most people don't own any gold. Silver, on the other hand, is needed. 60% goes to industrial uses. It's just gone. So, yeah, this is a big deal. When J.P. Morgan's starting to falter... Uh, J.P. Morgan will take out every single financial entity on the planet. You, you won't know the price of Bitcoin or cryptos or silver or anything. <clears throat> J.P. Morgan goes down. Just keep that in mind. And can you imagine the anger that we the people will feel towards someone like Jamie Dimon, who nothing but criticizes the, the, uh, the regulators and all that. The regulators are criminals. We, we need a world with no regulators. 
but it can't happen with the situation we have right now because regulators run cover for the manipulation and pretend to be on your side to keep you in the matrix. A world without regulators means most people would not invest, which is <laughs> most people should not invest. Let me tell you that. They'll, they'll invest, and they'll lose money, <clears throat> and they'll say, what the hell was I thinking? It's kind of like the crypto people who lost money in DeFi. They learned a lesson. Don't give out your precious assets <clears throat> unless you know what the hell you're doing. And you don't. Most people don't know how to invest. Most people should not be investing. But because of the unbacked fiat monetary system, the ability to buy stocks by the Fed, by the banksters, the ability to control everything, um, people think it's a good idea. So there you go. And then when something happens, like Bernie Madoff, they cry to the FDIC or to the, the regulators, oh, help me, help me, help me. Poor me, I didn't know what I was doing. But when their investments went up, they said, oh, I'm so brilliant, I know how to invest. <laughs> it's the same story, my friends. Anyway, uh, yeah, interesting that J.P. Morgan is losing deposits, which is the bread and butter of any bank. Remember, we live in a fractional reserve system. So every deposit they have in, they can create 10 times the amount and throw it out there in their crazy rigging operations. <clears throat> but so far, it's done well. Jamie Dimon has done uh, really well at, at rigging the game. Who says crime doesn't pay? Pays 100%, 1,000%. See if he'll walk away before this thing falls apart. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> on the silver front... Still held in check. This is what's going on. These are the moving averages. Uh, they're at about 23.30, and silver is currently sitting at 22.64. When it breaks those moving averages, we should get a run up. Again, it's all controlled anyway. Um, one thing I have been looking at lately is, a, again, an elevated gold-silver ratio. Uh, we're up at 85 to 1 gold-silver ratio. Again, if you have gold, if you hold any gold, in your own possession, or if you're crazy enough to do ETFs or anything like that, if you hold any gold, if you really like gold, swap it now for silver, then swap it back when the silver-gold ratio goes 5 to 1, 10 to 1. I'm waiting for 1 to 1. Then I'll, I, I'd love gold at, at 1 to 1. Maybe, maybe. We don't know how much gold there is in the world. It's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem. Nobody knows. Jeffrey Christian will tell you, according to the official stats, that there's 200,000 tons that's ever been mined, and that's all the gold, and just a small fraction of that's being mined every year. Um, that's complete bullshit. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a criminal liar, too. That's the worst kind. You can lie just because you don't know what the hell you're talking about, but when you're a criminal liar working with the criminal banks to rig the price of gold and silver, he belongs in jail with J.P. Morgan and friends. If you ask me, that's my take. Um, again, this is the last, uh, since 1975, as you can see, anything up here in the eighties is very much a, Hey, it's time to swap gold for silver. <clears throat> Even without the, the massive silver shortage that's going on. I mean, it's massive. Wait till next year's numbers come out, especially solar panels. Holy crap. Forget about it. They're exploding, especially in China. That's where all the silver is going. <laughs> so, yeah, I, number one, I don't believe that the uh, silver ETFs, I don't think that silver is in there. And I'll get to BlackRock in one second. BlackRock runs SLV. Um, but also the U.S. Mint issues. I, again, if you, you heard me on Friday, I said, yep, yeah, it looks like the, the Mint finally, they're supposed to update these numbers every day. They don't. And I, I've been bitching about that. You got to, if, you, if you're going to not update the sales every day. <laughs> Take this first line off. Total sales by month are updated every weekday by 5 p.m. If you're not going to do that, take that off your website. I mean, this is not rocket science. It's just been there for so long. So they don't do that. Uh, they'll, they'll do it in lumps. So right now they're doing about 750, 750, 760,000 uh, per week, and they're adding it to the Current numbers, so we look at probably Jack was right. The, the head of the Silver Eagle sales said they're going to go probably around 24 to 25 million ounces, and they're on track to do that. 
Now they're going to have to pick up the pace a little bit or work in December. They don't like to work in December. And usually they cut it off in November. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, there better be a push, I guess. Ventures Gibson said they expanded the production of Silver Eagles, but we're still, <laughs> we're still at under 25,000 or 25 million coins. And in 2000, what, 15, 16, somewhere along. Yeah, we did. Our highest, I think, is 47 million. So they have capacity to do at least 47 million. If she expanded, it's got to be well above 50 million. But if you expanded it, why aren't you selling the coins? And and the mint will blame COVID, will blame everything. Although during COVID, David Ryder, the other mint director, was doing you know five million a month, four or five million a month. How come he can do it, but Ventures Gibson can't? Can only do half of that. <clears throat> And it, we were stuck in a 900000 This is when I was really pissed off. 900000 a month. Um, then I had the discussion with Jack. By the way, go to RoadToRio.com. Go to the front page um, on the public road. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can listen to my discussion with uh, Jack Sermon, the head of Silver Eagle Sales, where he admits that the U.S. Mint was breaking, like, you know, had it like four or five laws. It's crazy. And he, he, even he is blown away by what was going on with the men. Now, he got a, a tongue lashing, most likely, because my, my last interaction with him, he said, oh, boy, boy, Ventress Gibson really picked it up. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. But, hey, it is what it is. We fight the fight. This was, by the way, if you want to know how I got in touch with it, I called customer service at the U.S. Men. And they, they, they couldn't answer my question, so they said, let me get someone who can answer the question. It was great. So I talked with... Customer service at the U.S. Mint just happened to be the head of uh, Silver Eagle Sales. Not production. He doesn't make the he does not make the decision on how many silver blanks he gets to uh, sell um, or Silver Eagles he gets to sell. There's there's production. There's uh, the hedging group. <laughs> Talk about the most ridiculous thing is the U.S. Mint running a hedge book um, to rig the prices. They lost 112 million dollars in 2001. 2021, 112 million dollars because they didn't close out their hedges during the uh, silver squeeze because that would have affected the market. That you are not, you, U.S. Mint, you are not supposed to even look at the price. The only thing that matters to you is are you meeting demand and are you selling those coins at cost because that's the law. So anyway, yes, the U.S. Mint. Uh, it looks like they might. They might do 24 20 to 25 million silver eagles. Um, obviously, demand is much higher than that. There's still huge premiums. Not as big as they were, mind you, but still big. Um, this should keep the premiums down, maybe. Um, people ask me, Bix, why do, you, why do you like the silver eagles so much? Um, I've always something in it. I, it's Call it intuition. Call it studying the... The uh, what the U.S. dollar actually is, it is it's it's not an ounce of silver. It's a, it's defined as point whatever it is, certain amount of grains of of silver. But it is the U.S. dollar is silver. It's not a full ounce. It's it's a little less than ounce. But the reality is, when the system crashes and the Federal Reserve note, all you guys now know about the Federal Reserve. What a joke it is. When that system gets imploded by the derivative bubble popping. Um, we do have legal money. It's not an ounce of silver. It is a, it is silver made and denominated by the U.S. Mint. That will be our money. And that will always have to be more valuable than the ounce of silver. Because otherwise people would just melt down the silver eagle, the, the one ounce dollar, and use that in and sell it to uh, you know the manufacturing sector. Industrial silver. So... It's interesting, the concept of what is money these days. What will money be when the old system collapses and collides among, upon itself, which I still think is going to be this year. I mean, I, I think that most of these big banks are insolvent already, and they're just being propped up for the final blow. Will it be nuclear war breaking out? Maybe. That's not the reason, though. That's the excuse. Whatever... The the reason is obvious. It's 170 years of price manipulation, price suppression. 
um, by the criminal banksters. That's the reason. But the excuse is going to be nuclear war, a solar flare, an EMP. That's the excuse. That's their get out of jail free card. Uh, I, I do think they're get if it's in control, they'll just claim force majeure. It was an outside force. Uh, we had a, a a hack in the Comex contracts in the in the Comex uh, trading system. Things shit like that. That's how they get out of it. Uh, but again, it's not the reason; it's the excuse. So if you read something in Bloomberg, why silver all of a sudden popped to eighty dollars? Over 50, and all of a sudden, it, it was, wait, it was trading at $22, and now it's trading at $80. There'll be an excuse, like nuclear war or whatever that excuse is, but it's not the reason. The reason is massive amount of manipulation and, and price suppression. To the, back to the 1850s, at least, at least. That's the opium wars. That's where... Uh, England was buying all these silks and teas and, and fabulous things from China. That trade opened up, and so China was on a gold st or silver standard, and England was on a silver standard. They paid with silver to get all these, you know, silks and all this stuff from China. So all the silver was flowing out of England into China. England got pissed off, said, "Hey, how can we get this silver back? We need to sell something to them that they'll." they'll part with their silver for, and that was opium. They got them addicted to opium. HSBC, Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, was set up in China to do that, and they thought they fought the opium wars over it, and you could just go down the, down the pike. From that point on, silver always had to be rigged, 100% controlled by the banking cabal, by you know, the deep state, by the, you name it. Everybody's got their, their paw in it, um, I am surprised that not more of the millionaire class in the United States have not been picking up on an understanding. I, I get, I get that a lot of the silver news is suppressed. A lot. I mean, just look at everybody's YouTube channel who talks about silver. <laughs> Even my YouTube channel. I, I've been stuck in the you know low hundred thousands for a hell of a long time because you're not allowed to talk about this stuff. How? What happens if you know a couple of the of the thousands of billionaires figure out, holy shit, I really own unbagged fiat money. I own nothing. And I have it uninsured at JP Morgan Chase. What happens if the, the hundred trillion dollars of uninsured deposits at JP Morgan Chase say, I gotta get out of here, where do I go? And if you understand gold, you instantly jump to silver. That that I mean, it took me probably a couple months when I first really understood gold, and I was a big gold bug. And then all of a sudden, I, I'm looking at the silver story. It's the exact same story except on steroids. And oh, by the way, today the price of gold is over two times its all-time high from 1980. Silver still lies at below 45% of its all-time high. What does that tell you? Silver's too hard to store. Okay, let's just say you had uh, 1,000, 10,000 ounces of silver, which is a big amount of silver, right? Uh, okay, I can see how that's too hard to store. What if you have 10,000 ounces of gold? Would that be too hard to store too? No, it's worth so much money. I'd, I'd easily store that. Oh my God, if I had 10,000 ounces of gold. You see the, the, the issue here? It's not that it, silver's bulky. It's silver's massively underpriced. When, ten, when, when there's a one-to-one -one ratio, gold-silver ratio, I think we are going to get to that pretty fast when it's freely traded. You're not going to have a problem storing your 10,000 ounces of silver. Your problem's going to be, where can I get more of it? Problems for companies like Elon Musk. You think Elon's smarter than an idiot. I, like I told you guys, I read his book. Well, I listened to it on audio. Amazing book. Doesn't say a word about silver, how important silver is to his company. Without cheap and available silver, Elon Musk companies will be destroyed. He's into solar power. He's going to change the world with the solar industry, right? He's into electric cars. He's going to change the world with electric cars. He's into space. All these things need massive amounts of silver, especially the solar stuff, especially electric cars. Both of those plan on using all, all of the silver produced for the next 25 years, both industries. How's that going to happen? <laughs> what kind of price would would be 
kicked out of the system when Elon Musk and an Apple computer who needs massive amounts of every cell phone has a hundredth of an ounce of silver in it, approximately. Every flat screen TV. You see the problem? Now we just got to get from here to there. From clamp down price manipulation, that is 100% required to run a fiat monetary system, to freely traded markets and freedom. <clears throat> so, yes, we are getting there. So, those of you who don't know, and I, I talked about this discussion a while ago, Palisades Gold Radio, great station. Go check it out. Um, this guy, Michael Lynch, is BlackRock intervening in the Silver Eagle production? Um, this is just a, an amazing interview. It was done, how long ago? Let's see, about a month ago. Um, yes. See, the, the, the excuse the Mint uses, although it's a lame excuse, I've talked to everybody about this, the excuse they use is that they can't get enough silver blinks. They, they have the production because they can't lie about that. We, we've seen it. They say they can't get enough silver planchettes, which is the silver blinks, to make the silver eagles. First of all, all their other products they don't seem to be having a problem with, and those aren't mandated by law to meet demand. Only silver eagles and gold eagles are mandated by law to meet demand. And gold eagles, I, I haven't checked the, the law lately. <laughs> they do change the law on occasion. Um, but I think gold eagles, I'll just have to look at it as, as far as how much they can charge for a gold eagle. Silver eagles, they have to charge cost. It is written in the law of interest that you have to charge cost. And by the way, the whole thing about having you know 11 or 12 authorized dealers who buy it and mark it up massively... That system needs to change. Um, I think the... I don't see any reason why Jack Sermon can't expand his Silver Eagle sales to everybody in the world. Everything's automated now. You know, if, if, if countries like Amex, Amark, Atmex, Amark... By the way, Amark's owned by... Partially by BlackRock, who partially owns... The um, Sunshine Mining, where the U.S. gets their... See how it all works? The U.S. gets their blanks. And any more excuses about, oh, you know, Sunshine Mint can't, 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 uh, can't produce enough blanks. That's bullshit. The law says you should have changed that. You should have... The U.S. Mint in the beginning days was making their own blanks. And they can do that. They do buy the bars on the comics. That's where the U.S. Mint gets its silver. So someone had said, oh, the U.S. can't pay more for anything. They weren't. They were buying their silver on the comics and taking the 1,000-ounce bars and moving them over to Sunshine Mint. Now, Sunshine Mint, controlled by BlackRock, indirectly or directly, is that where the problem is? BlackRock, who owns SLV as well. So watch this discussion Go to Pal uh, Palisade Go Palisades Gold Radio on YouTube and watch the discussion because it's true. BlackRock is, and crypto people are just starting to figure out. Hey, maybe BlackRock's rigging the crypto markets too, along with a lot of others. Crypto market is, I wouldn't say it's just as rigged as silver, but it's got all the components. And something really interesting just happened. I'll show you here. First of all. By the way, Sunshine Mint, they just announced that uh, two strategic business transactions. They're buying SMI, uh, which is, uh, let's see, SMI has acquired 100% ownership of Annex Plating, so for plating coins. And then also uh, another smaller mint called uh, Liberty Refiners. So... If they're buying all these mints and they have plenty of money, why can't their number one customer, the one number one, this guy Tom Power, the number one entity that you are, should be at least, most beholden to, should be the U.S. Mint. That's your largest customer is the U.S. Mint. Or at least used to be before Venture Skips it. Who knows now? But clearly... I mean, he, I think Tom said he's making 80 or 90 
million coin blanks a year, silver blanks. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Make as many as you can. Why? Why? Why is only one company doing it? Why is the U.S. Mint only using one company? And they have been for a long time. It's illegal to go on allocation at the U.S. Mint. That's illegal too. But it, they've been doing it for years. It's like nobody says anything to them because they're the government. And when you do say something, it goes in, in one ear, out the other. In one ear, out the other. So I think that'll change. Okay, let's talk about the excitement. Bitcoin jumped over 30000 today in a surprise announcement. Then they said, oh, no, 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 uh, we take it back. The surprise announcement was, of course, BlackRock. The rumor was BlackRock uh, was about to get their Bitcoin ETF approved. Now, we've been down this road so many times with, with cryptos, but BlackRock will get it approved. Why? Because it's BlackRock, and they use the ETFs to control the entire system. Why do you think BlackRock runs SLV with J.P. Morgan as the custodian? It's the criminal world that we live in. So don't get excited if BlackRock gets approved on an ETF. That means control for the as long as that thing's open and trading. It's not real Bitcoin that they trade in. You're going to see it. It's going to show it on a blockchain. Oh, yeah, we own this ETF Bitcoin, just like silver. We own uh, you know, half a million, a half a billion ounces of physical silver. But, oh, by the way, 50, 100 times that is being used to manipulate the price with futures and options and swap options and all the bullshit they use to rig the price. And the problem is going to be you know, so a rumor got out the SEC is, or it wasn't a rumor. They they didn't uh, go after something. So yeah, at some point the ETF will be approved. BlackRock said, no, 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 it hasn't been approved. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> and Bitcoin fell back down <laughs> or was forced back down by the riggers. Remember, Bitcoin doesn't trade in the exchanges. If, if, if you go into like Coinbase or Kraken or Binance or whatever exchange you're on, those are derivatives trading back and forth. It's not real, but it's not on blockchain trading. Now, theoretically, you can pull it out, and that's why I recommend everybody do. Do not have any money in, held by a third party or any cryptos held by a third party. But I think what's interesting here is, of course, it's going to be BlackRock's so only one, you know, the first one ever to get an ETF, and then they'll let little, little stragglers come on later. But BlackRock is going to be the control mechanism, the BlackRock ETF, just like SLV is a control me is one of the many control mechanisms for silver. So you're going to see cryptos being added to every one of these criminal exchanges. <clears throat> um, and we just heard uh, today that BlackRock has switched its opinion. Of course, they you know to suppress the price, they said. Larry Fink, the head of BlackRock, says, oh, it's shit, Bitcoin sucks. It's like Jamie Dimon. I'll fire anybody who trades Bitcoin. And then later you find out he was trading on after they slammed the Bitcoin price down. Larry Fink is now pro-Bitcoin all of a sudden. So the banks slam the price down. Gary Gensler does his job, gets rid of all the DeFi, and FTX blows up and all that. That was all part of the plan. And who's been buying? BlackRock. BlackRock, J.P. Morgan, the big criminal banks who want to control. They know the system is going to be cryptos in the future, but they want to control it, and they can do that by artificially suppressing the price. So that's what they did. I just want to point out the, the U.S. government is 100% participating in this. And if you look at, so the government finds criminals who deal in cryptos and will take it, um, whether or not, Sometimes they're criminals. Sometimes they're people who are challenging what the current system is, like Reggie Milton, for example. I'll get to that in a second because Veritasium went up like uh, 200% and fell back down like everything else. Um, why the U.S. government has $5 billion in Bitcoin? They have it because they seize it, and then when they sell it, it's at points in time that they coordinate with the banks so that the, the criminal cabal can get it and then you know government gets their kickback. They get to control the back price of Bitcoin with the 200,000 Bitcoin they currently have. And that was seen as light and clear as day in the Mt. Gox uh, distribution of the Bitcoin that they were selling off, which they shouldn't have sold off any, but they did. Um, right at the worst time, this was the 2017-18 crash or something like that. Um, and you can see it because you knew that the, um, 
the addresses of the coins. You can see when they were selling. It's like Bitcoin was just about to pull out of the death spiral, and then they dump billions on it again. So the government can continue to rig the price of Bitcoin, and they will. Maybe. We'll find out. Uh, as I said, Veritasium jumped to like $29. Just a couple days ago, it was down at like uh, under $10. Right down here, look at this, uh, $9.50. Again, <coughs> the thing about Veritasium is it was taken out. The entire company and, and the token and the um, intellectual property was under attack by the U.S. government through the SEC and the banks, basically, through the SEC, and they took Reggie out. They charged him. They charged him more than his ICO was worth, I believe, at the time. Um, and you have companies, the criminal deep state companies, like uh, uh, what was it, uh, the EOS guys, paying like a, a twenty million dollar fine after they earned what ICO of five billion, three billion, some massive thing. That's deep state. They can do that. Reggie, no, a black man taking over the the exchange. Uh, mechanisms to create peer-to-peer -peer transactions. That's everything the bankers hate. Completely, completely discriminatory organization, uh, the, the regulators. And if, 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 let's just say Veritasium was created by Jamie Dimon, you think that they would have treated Jamie Dimon the same way they treat Reggie Middleton? No, not a chance in hell. So Ver Veritasium... Reggie Middleton invented peer-to-peer -peer transactions on uh, through a mechanism, Veritasium, using the blockchain, so that no more need for brokers and dealers in the stock market. <laughs> you don't think the bankers were pissed? That's why they attacked him so viciously. Um, <clears throat> so if you think the good guys are going to win, which I do, and you think if you think they w would want to start up the stock market and the bond market and all that again in a different way, that's why I think uh, the U.S. government is holding 98 million Veritasium tokens and just holding it in limbo, not saying a word about it. Uh, I don't know if Reggie Reggie says he'll, you know, in, in the end, um, if he's allowed to participate again, which I think he will. Obviously, if, if the regulators are gone, um, the question is, will they transfer those tokens or Reg, will Reggie make just 100, uh, 100, 100 million new coins? Could he said he you know he won't he wouldn't screw the people who have the Veritasium tokens now but I mean he's been screwed more than anybody and and just because he made two hundred thousand tokens and applied his way of thinking to it and and the the technology um, it was prepaid software is what it was so now that Reggie got a patent yeah everybody should have some Veritasium as a hedge against all the other cryptos, the non-standalone cryptos. <coughs> because Reggie's patent, literally, they approved the patent. And you're going to either have to get the patent thrown out or come make a deal with Reggie. I think ultimately he deserves the deal because of the way he was treated. But, hey, will justice prevail? I believe so, ultimately in the end. But it's, yeah, I... It could go to zero. It could go to minus $40 trading on these exchanges. <laughs> and don't forget, Veritasium is so tiny traded. It's just traded on Mercadox now, I think. And, um, for example, it in the last week, it's doubled, and I think no more than $20,000 went into it, which rose the market cap to $46 million. Remember, I've been screaming this for so long, uh, market cap is just the last sale times the total amount of shares or tokens outstanding so and with reggie it's a little different because there's only two million tokens trading but there's a hundred million that were created 98 million are frozen by the u.s government and they could burn them they could do a lot of things with them they haven't done anything with them i think they're just waiting to come back to reggie and say okay the old system has imploded we get that it's criminal but we need to start something new, something similar to what we had. And you invented this technology. We, we allowed the patent to go forward because I think it might help humanity. Will you, will you help us do this through your technology that you invented? 
I think they will. Anyway, the reason I'm saying all this is we're giving away one Veritasium token with every private road subscription. Go to roadtoroad.com, click on subscribe today, and it's already loaded onto a paper wallet. It'll show up at your front door. All you got to do is take this little slip of paper, put it in with your stacks of silver in your safe, and lock it up. Um, and that's roadtoroad.com. Subscribe today. That's for the one-year subscription. Theta had a little bump. Everything had a little bump. Why? Because cryptos are traded in pairs. They're not. It's not new money coming in. Always traded in pairs. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the biggest pair. Bitcoin and then Ethereum. Those two are the biggest pairs. They decide the the course of every other crypto. And I, I know it's ridiculous. It's got nothing to do with fundamentals of what these cryptos do. But at the same time, it's the way that cryptos trade because most banks won't allow you to put money in there. You got to get some crypto somehow. Then you can go in and trade. And, and it's all set up that way and massively manipulated. So, yeah, Theta went up to like uh, 61 cents and then fell down to 59. Who knows? I, I do believe, and this is out of all the cryptos, I think Theta is going to be the number one token. I, there's just so many reasons that this company that invented a new way to share broadband, create... Uh, meta chains, meaning Amazon.com, can create an Amazon coin of their own, but it would be approved in the Theta blockchain uh, process, which is an amazing process with validators so they're fast, and then guardians to make sure the validators don't do anything squirrely. It's an amazing thing. So I know if you've been on the road route long enough, you're exhausted from the as we're always, always, we're all always very exhausted from the, the downturns in, in Bitcoin and cryptos. Oh, the sky is falling. That's when you want to buy, obviously, when the sky has fallen. Um, can it go down further? Absolutely. They can click a mouse and put theta to minus $40, just like they did with oil. Well, Pixton, why would I buy it? Because they can also click a mouse and put it at a million dollars. So you're, you're sitting there going, oh, shit. If they control it so much... And when will that control end? That's that's the real exciting thing. The end of fiat money means the end of these rigged markets too. So you'll have it in your own possession. You won't really know what it's worth until the new system gets going up and going. And, and um, then I think it, sky's the limit for theta. And that's why it's my number one crypto holding. Um, I think it's, it's uh, Ethereum on steroids. Same blockchain, by the way. Same process. Not not the same chain, but the same ERC-20 token type of thing. So you can run any company that runs on Ethereum can also run on the Theta network, the Theta blockchain. Hmm. That's why it's not tra allowed to be traded in the United States. It's, it, it's all these things that are going to be so important in the future. Um, the current system to control unbacked fiat money in the U.S. dollar means that the best coins of the future can't have to be stopped, have to be slowed down, can't trade on American exchanges, stuff like that. So Veritasium and Theta are great examples of that. So that's my take. That's what's going on. Again, you want to join the private road, get yourself one very token, go to roadtoruda.com, click on subscribe today, and this is for a one-year membership. Um, also on the left side, if you want free updates to your email, put your name and email address in. This is Bix. So what I got for you, lots going on. Keep an eye on uh, silver and, and cryptos. Signing things to come. When Bitcoin moves up, everything moves up. So keep an eye on that. Talk to you later.